One of the things I've always said when it comes to the post-Brexit years was that all these people, all the big levers, the 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 mouthpieces like Michael Gove, Boris Johnson, Daniel Hanan, the list can go on and on and on. They all went on TV. They all did these interviews, not only against people who were like oppositions on, on news shows. So the infamous quote from Daniel Hanan, only a fool would leave the single market and customs union. But Michael Gove, especially, where he was at in front of this farmer, and this farmer is raising legitimate concerns that are happening right now because of these trade deals we've signed. <laughs> who knew? Who knew that was going to happen? But this farmer is going, well, look, we can't have higher standards and have um, all these all these other cheaply imported, uh, you know, foodstuffs that are produced at lower standards that we can't compete again. Will you commit to trade deals that are, you know, nothing can be imported if it is lower than our standards? And Michael Gove goes, yes, yeah, sure, that's that's what we mean. We don't want anyone, uh, you know, undercutting our, our prices, etc. Yeah, farmers learning very, very quickly now what all those Brexit promises mean. And remember, farmers, when you look at their, their voting intentions, they were very much split when it came to um, most of the country. Some were very much, we want to remain. So others were... <laughs> believing in this whole Brexit fantasy that was spun to them by people like Michael Gove. They're finding out the hard way. That's what it is. And now, and now we get to even bigger things, because who were these Brexiteers really at their core? Why did they want to leave the EU? Well, it was always about regulations. Most people who are these big, hardcore Brexiteers are free market fundamentalists. They do not want full stop any form of regulation and fully believe the government should just get out of the way of business and should just allow businesses and corporations, etc., to just do whatever the hell they want. And today, they have shown once again just exactly what they are. That they promised that voting for Brexit would not mean lower standards or anything like that, that we would have even higher standards than Europe. Brexit the movie has this whole pitch in it about how higher standards we can have from people from people like, from Daniel Hanan saying how fantastic all these higher standards we're going to have from Europe or at least compared to Europe shall we say and what has come out today well Rishi Sunak in a bid to look good because that's the only way I can <laughs> put it forward, and especially the right-wing newspapers are celebrating this as some sort of big Brexit boost, because now we can build over a 100,000 houses. But what does this merely mean? Well, Michael Gove and Theresa Coffey have pretty much ripped up river-polluting, river-polluting laws, or in this case, the nutrient-neutral rules for rivers. And we've already know we have all this problem with river pollution at the moment. The environmental agency continuously bringing this up, saying, hey, yeah, our rivers aren't safe. External third party environmental protection companies going, yeah, rivers are, are, are over polluted. And now, well, here's the, here's the plan, or at least Michael Gove and Theresa Coffey seem to have come up with. If our rivers are already polluted, and it's the rules that are telling us that our rivers are over-polluted, why not just lower the rules? Because here's the thing, under these new changes that both Gove and Coffey are now trying to uh, heavily push forward, technically, now, under our rules, those rivers aren't polluted. So what are you complaining about? Under our regulations, those rivers are fine. Have at it. Meanwhile, these rivers stink to high heaven, are being destroyed ecologically. And yet, this is the Brexit freedoms that Michael Gove has now claimed. We can now pollute 
the rivers because they can the rules can be watered down. That's where we are with Brexit. One of the key promises, I always want to remind people, the key promises, and especially from someone like Michael Gove, who always maintained that Brexit would not mean a lowering of standards. It would mean that we could have higher standards. We have seen time and time again this and I hope there is going to be a big pushback. I really do hope there is going to be a big public outcry on this. Um, because while all the right-wing press are spinning it as, oh my God, it's it's the housing bonanza with you know, the UK needs. What in reality this means is that pol water pollution rules are just almost non-existent they have been watered down and this means we've seen this from the recent farming changes we've seen this now in building rules the government has a responsibility to protect the environment using regulation and as we always said throughout all of this they just do not want that. They have destroyed and defunded and understaffed the regulatory bodies that are responsible for maintaining and policing these standards since Brexit. They have constantly said how much they are going to get rid of these rules and regulations, not only just here for the environment, but for workers' rights as well. And yet, I want to remind you how this is being spun today. Because the Daily Express's front headlines is that because of these house building rule changes, we can now build 100,000 extra houses. But that's not the case because the government has made such pledges before in the past to build all these extra houses. They have not even managed to commit to building houses at the current level. What these new deregulatory measures mean is that, yeah, housing uh, contractors and builders, well, now you don't have to worry about the pollution that you might cause. And that will have a big impact on the environment. It could lead to a lot of uh, bad health outcomes for a lot of people living in those areas. This was not what was promised. And I want to I remember people, this was not what was promised from these Brexiteers in 2016. And it should be continuously brought up that this was what they said, that Brexit was not about lowering our standards. But that's what we that's what we constantly said at the time because we knew what those people were. They were free market fundamentalists. And as far as they are concerned, they would love just to completely burn every single rule and regulation the government has. Because as far as they are concerned, the government should not be in the business of regulating, well, <laughs> markets, businesses, or anything like that. And that is the government we now have, unfortunately, at least for the time being. And I worry that because they know they've got such a limited time, left in government, that they know they're going to be experiencing a landslide wipeout, that they decide, at least until the next election, that they might as well go ahead and just start slashing and burning as many of these rules as possible. And it should be up to the opposition now to put as many barriers and blocks in place as possible to stop these regulations from being taken away. So we'll keep an eye on this, but yeah, this is bad. This is incredibly bad, but we'll see what the outcry of this is. But as always, thank you very much for watching. And of course, as always, we'll see you all next time.